36. We're so delighted. We are so delighted to have you, Nilu Jenks, tonight to speak to us about your candidacy for D5 Seattle City Council. So over to you, Nilu, to introduce yourself and welcome. Thank you. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Nilu Jenks. I use she, her pronouns. I live in the Lake City area, and I'm really glad to be here. In March of 2019, my son and I heard a car crash and ran outside to help. As we got to the street, a policeman pulling out his gun told us to run back inside. Unbelievably, the terrible Sandpoint mass shooting was unfolding on my doorstep. This occurred shortly before after I'd moved back from California, where we lived temporarily to get help from family. While there, the Parkland shootings happened, and two moms and I decided we had had enough. We needed to do something, so we organized and fundraised enough money to host three successful gun buybacks and remove thousands of guns from our streets. As the largest gun buyback in the nation, we were able to drive, narrative, drive the narrative about buybacks and push to make them the educational community outreach they should be. Today, our buyback has become an official program run by the county. I want to bring these proven of skills of advocacy and organization to the problems facing Seattle. First, we're tired of the false choices when it comes to public safety. We should be able to keep our parks and neighborhoods safe without blaming our unhoused neighbors. We can both understand that police play a role in our society and must acknowledge that serious racial bias and excessive force problems exist. Second, District 5 needs a champion for sidewalks that have been promised but never delivered. I'm committed to establishing new environmentally sustainable sidewalks and across our neighborhoods and also connecting them to biking and busing options to our light rail system. Third, our city needs to be a national leader for environmental justice. We need to do everything we can to reduce our impact on the city and our planet. We must address the issues we face ethically and responsibly, so I would like to bring a climate justice tool to the city to help make our difficult policy decisions. Finally, we need to rapidly increase the amount of affordable housing stock in our city. Seattle should be a city everyone can enjoy regardless of income while making sustainable and dense growth a priority. We deserve a city council that works together, gets results, and makes Seattle an even safer and enjoyable place to live. Thank, thank you. you so much, Nilu. The first question tonight will be asked by Alex. Great, thank you. Hi, Nilu. Uh, what steps will you take to ensure that the city remains safe for all, including Black, Indigenous, and LGBTQ plus people, while keeping police accountable to elected leadership and our communities? Thank you. It's a great question. Um, I'm the daughter of Iranian immigrants who experienced racial bias and abuse from the police. It is unacceptable to me that an institution that's meant to serve and protect is instead a source of fear if for a lot of people and a cause of a great amount of injustice in our society. Due to international politics, my parents became undocumented when I was a year old and my sister was days old. Not having recourse to resources when they were abused was terrible, and as a city councilwoman, I know the importance of sanctuary cities. I moved to Seattle in 2007 and my children were both born here, but during my short time in California, I was a constructive city member. I organized with a group of people to make our city the first welcoming city in the United States, and I applaud Seattle for being a sanctuary city, and I will hold on to these values as a city councilwoman. As reproductive rights and trans rights are shamefully being eroded nationwide, our city needs to be a place of safety. As a woman of color, I know that our Black, Indigenous, LGBTQ+, and other marginalized communities need protections, and I am and will be a strong community advocate for them. I have co-written a racial equity curriculum that is currently being taught at two Seattle high schools and will be used at parks, with Parks and Rec this summer um, that is being facilitated by the Urban League. I believe that being open about these conversations and holding them into the forefront is an important part of addressing the issues we face. For our policing, we need a civilian oversight committee to ensure that police are held responsible for their actions. I would push for training that is focused on de-escalation pr practices, and I would revisit our hiring practices as well. We need to think about who is attracted to these positions. I would fund and expand our lead and co-lead programs as alternative response models. The city must also properly fund and staff the Community Safety and Communication Center to manage 911 calls and allow for behavioral response teams to be sent when behavioral struggles are the problem. We do not need a gun and badge to address those issues. Hi. As always, talking about any community, there should be direct outreach. Sorry, is that the 10 second word? Hi. Okay, um, to them to learn about their needs and what they want. I would engage with community leaders and people in those communities to find solutions that work for everyone. 
I also have Thank a lot of stuff so on my website about this. Yeah. Brittany will ask question number two. How would you ensure that the city has an updated climate action plan? And what specific actions would you prioritize to get us back on track to meeting Seattle's Green New Deal goals? Thank you. Climate justice is a huge part of my platform and really important to me. Creating an updated plan will be an up to one of my top priorities, and I will focus on concrete steps that will take the city that can take <clears throat> steps that the city can take within the bounds of its jurisdiction and power to address these issues. Clean city electrification and um, electricity and electrification. Sorry, <laughs> uh, Seattle City Light is blessed with a nearly carbon-free electricity supply, and therefore rapidly electrifying all aspects of the city's economy, from building to transportation to industry, will have a huge and positive impact on our climate goals. I would direct Seattle City Light to provide incentives such as on-bill financing and rate discounts to individuals and businesses who electrify their buildings and transportation. I would advocate for a large scale deployment of EV charging facilities, and I would enforce and implement net, net zero new building codes. I would provide incentives for electrifying existing codes, buildings as well. I would streamline and properly resource the permitting process specifically for electrification projects. We need denser housing, which is lower carbon housing. I would push for more dense housing well linked to transit throughout the city. Clean public transport and walking, biking infrastructure are another important part. It's important to continue expansion of the light rail system and increase access to it via electric buses, biking, and walking infrastructure. And like President Biden, I'm committed to introducing a climate justice tool for the city of Seattle. It is critical that any updated climate action plan prioritizes equity and inclusion, ensuring that communities are most, that are most impacted by climate change and environmental injustices are centered in the development of the plan and receive support and resources to mitigate those impacts. One of the keys to success of any plan is to encourage community participation and education. This should include programs to engage the community in the, the development and implementation of the plan, as well as education campaigns to increase awareness and prom promote behavior change. Thank you so much. Next question will be asked by Chef this evening. Okay. The Move Seattle levy is set to expire at the end of 2024. The next nine year transportation levy, levy will go before the voters in November 2024 to begin in 2025. What investments and improvements would you prioritize for the next transportation levy? Thanks. Um, I'm committed to expanding our public transport while placing immense priority on environmental, environmentally and sustainable decisions. So environmentally sound and sustainable solutions. Sorry, I'm like really tripping over these big words today. I'd advocate for EV charging stations and electrification for our transportation fleet and available to our residents as well. As we expand our pedestrian infrastructure, we must also ex expand our access to public transportation. The light rail has brought improved access along the north south corridor, but we must also expand bus routes and um, bike lanes. It's vital to increase utilization of the light rail in public transport in general. It needs to be rapid and reliable, and that's gonna be one of my priorities for sure. Um, we need to address our traffic congestion, address the challenges of climate change, and meet the needs of our different communities by supporting our public transport. Lake City and Bitter Lake are two districts that can greatly benefit from bus routes, and generally east-wide connectivity is something that I'd love to see in the city. It really slow, makes a lot of people rely on cars, and we need to do everything we can to push away from cars. Um, and I'd like to see more greenways to walk on and bike paths to be enjoyable. Um, and we must put pressure on the state and sound transit to speed up the timelines on our transit alternatives. Finally, I'd like to see traffic calming measures along Sandpoint Way, Lake City Way, and Aurora. I live on Sandpoint Way, and um, we deserve to be able to live safely and to be able to build community with each other. And I hear that from our Lake City Way neighbors and definitely from Aurora neighbors too. Thank you so much. Our final question this evening that's prepared is from Barbara. Barbara, over to you. Thank you. Um, the city has been in a homelessness state of emergency since 2015. I would say that would be declared. Um, it's older than that. Yet our homelessness crisis has not receded. What are we doing wrong and what steps will you take 
on the city council to address the crisis? I think our city lost track of its long-term goals. This extreme growth of Seattle was predictable, especially as we were advertising being the tech city of the North and we're 10 to 15 years behind on housing now. We need to look to rapidly increasing our housing stock. There's a lot of evidence that shows that housing affordability and housing availability is the greatest driver of homelessness. So the other part that I would like to also see is increased domestic violence protections because for women with children, especially, it is one of the biggest reasons they become homeless and nobody should have to put, choose between violence and a home. Um, I'm excited about the social housing initiative. I knock doors for it. And um, I'm looking forward to the progressive revenue initiative that they plan on bringing to council. And, you know, I'd obviously have to see it there. <laughs> they didn't share it with me, um, but I would plan on voting to support that. We need creative models. It's working in Maryland and many other cities abroad. And I think that is an exciting opportunity for us over here. We, um, sorry. I, I'm like, I decided to go more natural, <laughs> like too much over the words. Great. Thank you. Um, Washington State just passed middle housing and the um, design review laws. I'm super excited about those. In Oregon, we saw that cities went past the minimum requirements. Absolutely. That's something I would support in Seattle. I think homelessness is a regional issue. I would work with partnering cities to make sure that they also push past those requirements, especially along transit corridors um, to push past and also move up height restrictions along by schools and along parks we also should be having more dense and increased housing because people should have easy access to those resources and along 130th light rail station um we need to provide supports you know to create as they're up zoning to make sure that they get to maintain their feeling of housing they're worried um <laughs> you know it's funny because i'm not now looking up at you i couldn't see the 10 seconds before but that generally housing 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 um is what i think yeah there's more but Thank you. Thank you so much, Nilu. We're going to go into follow up questions. I'm going to go by hands that are raised. And we haven't figured out our clock situation. So thank you for bearing with us as we uh, muddle through that aspect. Jeremy, over to you. Um, hi, you mentioned uh, a few times dense housing specifically tied to transit. Um, you also mentioned that you live on Sandpoint Way. Mm -hmm. So I think you're probably aware that much of our transit right now is on really busy, looted arterials. Um, so I guess my question, there's still a lot of areas that maybe are a little further from transit, but ne aren't necessarily getting all this dense housing and may still be mostly single family homes. Should we also be building dense housing in those neighborhoods that have avoided it so far, even if it's not as close to transit? Yeah. Definitely. I mean, the middle housing passage is law passed, and if people want to build more housing, they should be allowed to, you know, just uh, the focus around transit hubs just because we need that. But, um, you know, we need to be a denser city for climate justice reasons and just um, for having increased stock to necessity. We don't have a lot of choice. And I think a role of city council is to help people bridge that concern. I think we can keep a lot of identity. All of Paris would fit in North Seattle. We can have beautiful like communities that people care about and love and feel connected to different neighborhoods without giving up um, our future. <laughs> you know, we need denser housing, so yes. Thank you, Nilu. Toby, I see you next. Uh, yes, I have a related housing question. Um, there's this, there's a, mechanism uh, called inclusionary zoning or inclusionary housing. Mm -hmm. uh, are you familiar with it? If you aren't, I can explain it in a sentence. Um, if I'm you, not familiar with it, so I would really it, it means that uh, when the zoning is changed, the city can require that at least some of the new housing, if not most of it, is affordable to lower income households. Would you support that? Um, I would, yes, but that my natural inclination is to say yes, but I am, would love to know more. Like, I don't, you know, I don't know that all housing, we need housing at all income levels in Seattle. Honestly, we're lacking so much housing, but I would hope 
that um, this is not a great answer right now. But yeah, okay. generally I appreciate that. More low affordable housing for sure, but we need housing at all level. And I believe like multi zoning, like we need mixed income housing <laughs> everywhere across the city is the answer that I can give. And so um, uh, and I support that. Thank you so much. Barbara, I think I saw your hand raised. Yeah, so um, I'm I'm gonna uh, zoom in on housing again and just um, I, I think about this as um, a city council member, not an, not so much an advocate. So we all know that, and it's, you know, some of the numbers are uh, 10,000 units a, a year for, um, five, for five years. Well, that's, you know, billions of dollars. And um, where, and where is the city council going to get money like that? You know, how do you think about that? It's, it's everybody is talking about the need for housing, but um, most land is privately owned and housing is a business. And we can't tell people, we can put incentives, but they're very, very weak. You know, they're very marginal. They, they create um, tens of units or hundreds of units when we need thousands. Um, so how, how do you take that into the city council? Are you, would you look at um, departments? I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you to close your question, so Brittany. Thank you. How, 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 do you, how are you gonna fund the housing need? Think about it. Right, I think we can extend the multifamily tax exemption, which has been very successful in increased housing. And I think we can look, a lot of the problem with housing is funding the ground floor developers are having an issue so the public development agency like cultural space agency that is building arts on the first floor and rents it out for 10 years will allow a lot more places to break and that will a lot of people fund the arts you can get there we need creative solutions for funding um the social housing initiative is one i'm really excited about like i said i knocked doors for it and i'm looking forward to see what their progressive income stream that they are willing to want to propose um I think we have to partner with nonprofits, with faith services. I was just meeting with a church member, actually pastor today, who is um, looking to build housing on their lot in Haller Lake. So I think we just need to be creative in who we partner with and really focus on this as a big thing. And um, yeah, so, and there's a lot we can do, you know? Thank you, Nilu. Yeah. I'm going to cut time just so that Brittany gets a chance to ask her question. Thank you so much, Brittany. Hi, thank you. Um, so as you know, uh, despite living in, in a bit of a bubble here in Seattle, homophobia and especially transphobia are on the rise across the nation. And I was just wondering if you had any specific ideas for things that we could do here at the city level to help protect um, LGBTQ plus and especially trans people who live here and more who we can probably expect to move here because we are a safer place for them than many of our neighbor states. Yeah, I think city council has an important role in education and advocacy. You know, my daughter, my friend's trans daughter in Iowa is looking to be take political asylum and, you know, is applying to jobs in different states immediately because her daughter can't go to the bathroom. I think part of it is just um, educating the public, being a strong supporter and, um, you know, any laws for protection, making sure that we provide them, you know, and be a resource for other cities and states in, a, in an example. Um, I'm grateful that in our city we're doing well, but across our state we have a lot of issues too. And so um, <clears throat> I think we can do along those lines, mainly partnering with the communities themselves and seeing what their needs and desires are, because I can't speak for that community not being part of it, but there are many people that I love who are part of the community and I will do everything to take care of them. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Nilu. We have just about exhausted the, the time um, together, but I will give you 30 seconds if you if there's any other follow-up point you want to make, and then Jeremy will give a quick recap on what happens next. Is there any kind of follow comment that you would like to make before we end our 20 minutes? Um, I would like to say that I want to learn more about inclusionary housing. You know, I am definitely available for people to reach out to me. I am always learning and a very eager and fast learner. And um, I would love to support our city and help meet its needs. Yeah. Thank you so much, Nilu. Jeremy, why don't you walk us through a quick summary of what happens next? 